You do not suffer from a lack of self-worth. Indeed, your greatest challenge all your life has been to control your ego. Some have said it's been a case of too much self-worth. I invite you to move past your ego investments. Self-worth is not your problem. You are blessed with an abundance of it. Most people are. You all think very highly of yourself, as rightly you should. The problem is lack of understanding of the principles of abundance altogether. Usually with a massive misjudgment about what is good and what is evil. You carry a thought around that money is bad. You also carry a thought around that God is good. Therefore, in your thought system, God and money do not mix. This makes things interesting because this then makes it difficult for you to take money for any good thing. I mean, if a thing is judged very good by you, you value it less in terms of money. So the better something is, the more worthwhile something is, the less money it's worth. You are not alone in this. Your whole society believes this. So your teachers make a pittance and your strip teachers a fortune. Your leaders make so little compared to sports figures that they need to steal to make up the difference. Your priests and your rabbis live on bread and water while you throw coins at entertainers. Think about it. Everything on which you place a high intrinsic value, you insist must come cheaply. The lonely research scientist seeking a cure for AIDS goes begging for money, while a woman who writes a book on a hundred new ways to have sex makes a fortune. This having it all backwards is a propensity with you, and it stems from wrong thought. The wrong thought is your idea about money. You love it, and yet you say it is the root of all evil. You adore it and yet you call it filthy rich. And if a person does become wealthy doing good things, you immediately become suspect. You make that wrong. So a doctor had better not make too much money or had better learn to be discreet about it. And a minister, whoa, she'd really better not make lots of money or she'll surely be trouble. You see in your mind, a person who chooses the highest calling should get the lowest pay. Hmm. You should think about that. Your current money thoughts are wrong thoughts. They do not currently serve you. Remember, thoughts are creative. So if you think money is bad, yet you think yourself good, well, you can see the conflict. Now you, in particular, my son, act out this consciousness in a big way. For most people, the conflict is not nearly so enormous as for you. Most people do what they hate for a living, so they don't mind taking money for it, bad for the bad, so to speak. But you love what you do the days and times of your life. You adore the activities with which you cram them. For you, Therefore, to receive large amounts of money for what you do would be in your thought system, taking bad for the good, and that is unacceptable. You'd rather starve than take filthy lucre for pure services, as if somehow the service loses its purity if you make money for it. So here we have this real ambivalence about money. Part of you rejects it and part of you resents not having it. Now the universe doesn't know what to do about that because the universe has received two different thoughts from you. So your life in terms of money is going to go in fits and starts because you keep changing your thought about it. You don't have a clear focus. You're not really sure what's true for you. And the universe is just a big Xerox machine. It simply produces multiple copies of your thoughts. Now there's only one way to change all this. You have to change your thought about it. So this begs the question, how can we effectively change our thought about a thing? 
The usual method of creation is a three-step process involving thought, word, and action. First comes thought, the formulative idea, the initial concept. Then comes the word. Most thoughts ultimately form themselves into words, which are often then written or spoken. This gives added energy to the thought, pushing it out into the world where it can be noticed by others. Finally, in some cases, words are put into action. Then you have what you call a result. A physical world manifestation of what all started as a thought. Everything around you in your man-made world comes into being this way. All three creation centers are used. But now the question, how do you change a sponsoring thought? For if humans do not change some of their sponsoring thoughts, humankind could doom itself to extinction. The most rapid way to change a root thought or sponsoring idea is to reverse the thought word deed process. Do the deed that you want to have the new thought about. Then say the words. Do this often and you'll train your mind to think a new way. Do you have any idea how your mind came up with the thoughts it now has? Do you know that your world has manipulated your mind to think as you do? Wouldn't it be better for you to manipulate your mind than for the world to? Would you not be better off to think the thoughts you want to think than those of others? Are you not better armed with creative thoughts than with reactive thoughts? Yet your mind is filled with reactive thought, thought that springs from the experience of others. Very few of your thoughts spring from self-produced data, much less self-produced preferences. Your own root thought about money is a prime example. Your thought about money, it is bad, runs directly counter to your experience, that it's great to have money, so you have to run around and lie to yourself about your experience in order to justify your own root thought. You are so rooted in this thought, it never occurs to you that your idea about money may be inaccurate. So now what we are up to is coming up with some self-produced data. And that is how we change your root thought and cause it to be your root thought, not another's. You have one more root thought about money, which I've yet to mention, that there's not enough. In fact, you have this root thought about just about everything. There's not enough money. There's not enough time. There's not enough love. There's not enough food, water, compassion in the world. Whatever there is that's good, there's just not enough of it. This consciousness of not enoughness creates and recreates the world as you see it. Seek to change these sponsoring thoughts. Money is bad. Money is scarce. Money may not be received for doing God's work. Money is never given freely. Money does not grow on trees when in fact it does. Money corrupts. These are lies, every last one of them. You've got a lot of work to do if you're not happy with your present money situation. On the other hand, it's important to understand that you're unhappy with your present money situation because you're unhappy with your present money situation. <laughs> you are what you think you are. It's a vicious circle when the thought is negative. You've got to find a way to break the cycle. So much of your present experience is based on your previous thought. That leads to experience, which leads to thought, which leads to experience. This can produce constant joy when the sponsoring thought is joyous. It can and does produce continual hell when the sponsoring thought is hellacious. The trick is to change sponsoring thought. The first thing to do is reverse the thought word deed paradigm. If you want to change a root thought you have, 
to act before you think. An example of this. Say you're walking down the street and you come across an old lady begging for quarters. You instantly know that as little money as you have, you surely have enough to share with her. Your first impulse is to give her something. There's even a part of you that's ready to reach in your pocket for a little folding money. A one or even a five. What the heck? Make it a grand moment for her. Light her up. Then thought comes in and says, what, are you crazy? We've only got seven dollars to get us through the day and you want to give five to her? So you start fumbling for that one. And here comes thought again. Hey, hey, man, come on. You don't have that money. You don't have that many of these that you can just give them away. Give her some coins and let's get out of here. So quickly you reach into the other pocket to try to come up with some quarters. But your fingers feel only nickels and dimes, so you're embarrassed. Here you are, fully clothed, fully fed, and you're going to nickel and dime this poor woman who has nothing. You try in vain to find a quarter or two. Oh, there's one deep in the fold of your pocket. But by now you've walked past her, smiling wanly. And it's too late to go back and she gets nothing. And then you get nothing either. Instead of the joy of knowing your own abundance and sharing it, you now feel as poor as the woman. Why didn't you just give her the paper money? It was your first impulse, but your thought got in the way. So next time, decide to act before you think. Give the money. Go ahead. You've got it. And there's more where that came from. That's the only thought that separated you from the homeless lady. You're clear there's more where that came from and she doesn't know that. When you want to change your root thought, you've got to act in accordance with the new idea you have. But you must act quickly or your mind will kill the idea before you know it. I mean that literally. The idea, the new truth, will be dead in you before you've had a chance to know it. So act quickly when the opportunity arises. And if you do this often enough, your mind will soon get the idea. And it will be your new thought.